Okay, we are at the southeast corner of the house behind the gate. Behind the gate. And here we have a gate that opens inwards. No, it was supposed to open outwards. It's broken and held together with a bungee cord. Okay. Interesting. This is the southeast corner. We're looking out towards the front. The house faces southeast. So, for the purpose of these reports, the home faces south. We're on the east side. And up in here, we see there's a brick structure out front. What we see there is with that vent is that it's got a lot of dust. It's got a lot of debris in it. Looks like a squirrel's been making a nest. A bird. A squirrel or a bird has been making their nest up in that. A brick is a very good building material. Okay? This home could burn down and you could reuse the brick. But it's also porous. Okay, that's one characteristic. It's, uh, it's a great insulator, both for sound and for temperature, but, but it's porous. So when you, the rain hit it last night, the, that's why we have weep holes around the perimeter. Those are there for on purpose. And most of the time, the only thing that's gonna, you're going to see come out of there is a vapor barrier. That's what you're going to see most of the time. Um, if you have an event, I've seen a few, I hope you don't, if you have an event, then water will come out of those. But we hope, we hope that doesn't happen. Now we're still looking at the brick here, and, you know, am I getting carried away? Because that happens. But it looks to me like the mortar on this corner, right in here, doesn't quite match. And it could have just been the batch that they were pouring. It could have been that. You know, the brickwork looks a little different, a little less continuity in here. Um, or there was a repair on this wall. You want to ask, this is my um, understanding, this is a one-owner home, but, you know, the, it was, the ownership was shared. And so, being shared, we don't know for sure, you know, that both parties knew exactly what was going on. And you see these little circles around here? Okay, we know that this is a slab foundation, and we also know that it's a post-tension cable. There's a couple different types of post-tension cables, and we don't know which type this is, but we do know that it is a post-tension cable. Now, these cables that come through, I and mean, the cables make it very strong, and, that, and that's a good thing, regardless of which type it is. But the cables come in through very strong, but these ends should have been better sealed, okay, to keep them from rusting. If they rust, they expand. If they expand, it cracks the concrete. If they rust... They get weaker. If they get weaker, they break. It's very expensive to replace one of those cables. So a little tender love and care should be brought out of across here. Now, on this side, on the east side, our drainage isn't so hot. It just isn't. I'm sorry. Okay. We do have a surface drain over here. We're trying to mitigate the issue, but, but we do not have drainage. And the way the retaining wall comes in here and folds into the house, you know, we're choking down the water flow. We're choking down the water flow so it stops here. And you can see that once it gets around the corner, you also see signs of erosion starting here. So we've got just a little bit of a drainage issue on this side. We've also got vinyl siding, okay? Uh, those are called our soffits. And those are little perforations. Those are soffit vents, okay? In theory, we should have a soffit vent on the surface behind these. Were they properly positioned so that the soffit vents line up when they added the siding later? We don't know that. We don't know that. We might get a clue, or a better clue, or a better understanding when we get into the attic. Okay, we're moving on along. Soffit, soffit, soffit. Like that. We got a whole video for the condensing units here. So we come along here. I get my parkway, parkour skills on. This is a good discussion to have about retaining walls. This is a gas port for the patio. That's a natural gas, it's not a propane gas. And check out your manufacturer's, the, your grill manufacturer or the specifications about where it's going because you put a grill right here and you have all this vinyl siding. Okay, the heat coming up, it could cause damage to your vinyl siding. Let's look at the old man down. Okay, our rain gutters, 
are not discharging water far enough away from the structure. We got a little bit of damage right here. Could have been hail damage, could have been age on the siding trim board, okay? It's blocked out. Now this siding, oh, look at you. Are you kidding me? I'm gonna check it some more. This is one of the few times I've seen vinyl siding hung properly. Huh. Wow, because they call that hanging. I'll go into another spiel about that later. Now usually, the retaining wall, whoever's property the wall is retaining has responsibility of the wall. This one's pretty obvious because the wall is through the middle of the property, so of course the property owner would be responsible for this. And usually when we uh, address retaining walls, we'll talk about it a little more, but usually when we're addressing retaining walls, if it's farther than half its height away from the structure, it should have no immediate effect on the structure, the structure's foundation, so forth. So this retaining wall, and we're going to look at some more because there's plenty around here. And the good thing is these we have weeps that reduce the hydrostatic pressure coming through. Now one thing we can't tell with a retaining wall like this, I can look at it, it's not cracked, it's performing, it's doing its job. I do not know how it was backfilled. I do not know if there's any dead men behind there, uh, ge uh, geogrid, anything like that. So I, I don't know if those things are, are back there to maintain the wall. Now based on the age of the swimming pool equipment, the age of the swimming pool, this retaining wall and then based on the age of the house, the ones out front, and the fact that they match, that these retaining walls seem to have been performing very well for a long time. Now this is a little crepe myrtle, okay? And uh, you can cut this down to its base and it'll grow back. I'm not an arborist here. But a tree should not be closer than 25 feet to a structure to allow for its root growth and then the branches growing up and causing damage to the home. Okay, they, they, they just shouldn't. Now, I get it. This is a crepe myrtle. It's oriental, ornamental, excuse me. It's ornamental. Actually, it is an oriental tree. It's an invasive species. But, you know, most people don't have a lot of concern in that regard when we're discussing crepe myrtles. Coming on along, we've got a whole kitchen video here. We've got a whole kitchen video here. My clients are showing up. We've got a whole swimming pool video coming up and moving along. Oh, I know what I wanted to talk about. Do I? I thought I saw a perfect example. Okay, so we got the weep holes. Okay, the weep hoses, which we need, and then we, I do have a perfect example. Even though this is on a patio, but over our fenestrations, I think that's French, the whole window wall, I don't know. But, so we got windows, that's a fenestration. This window is surrounded by siding, okay? This window, okay, is not supporting any brick, okay? But this door is, this door is. And what happens with the talk about the brick, okay, Moisture goes behind the brick. We should have a vapor barrier back there. I wasn't here when it was built. We should have a vapor barrier. And then the vapor comes out of here. Okay. And this brick doesn't match either. I know. I'm, I feel very confident that this was an addition. So. Long story short. This lets the moisture out from the, from the drainage plane. From the drainage plane. When you have a door like this. We have these things, when it's a square door, we have metal lintels. See the way the rust is forming on that? Okay, we've interrupted, it probably would rust anyway to be honest, I mean look at the hinges. But we, we have interrupted the drainage plane with a metal lintel to support the brick. And when we change or interrupt the drainage plane, then we should have a weep hole over the lintel right there. You know, you could put one there, it's, they're not real scientific about it. And, uh, but we do not have weep holes over our lentils. And I see this in other places as well. Yeah. So, moving on along, this is, okay. This is, again, we're gonna have a story about the refrigerator. We're gonna have a story about the sink. We're gonna have a story about the diving board. There you go, you're gonna need this sooner or later. <laughs> All right, thank you very much. We're moving along. And this is the way I do it, women. I give you videos. I explain things to you. Okay, so we're coming on along. And the wall's looking fine. There's not too much brick. Okay, we got a little crack in our, our brick right there. 
Moving, moving still on and along. One thing that's really amazing to me, and I've been around the house a little bit, but one thing that's is I'm not seeing a lot of cracks inside the mortar. I'm not seeing a lot of separation between the bricks. Moving on along this door also, if you'll notice, and even though it's protected, our lintel is rusting and we do not have weep holes. Now, when you have light fixtures on the exterior sides, okay, light fixtures, a little, there's a little sconce, this little carriage sconce. It should have been sealed like on the, uh, you're gonna learn on the disconnects for the air conditioning and for the electric meter. But this should be sealed to help prevent moisture infiltration into the brickwork. Moving on along. Now, this is uh, a double whammy. Yay! Double whammy! Okay? But we've got this apron around the swimming pool. And it's coming up to our brickwork. And we have a mastic sealer. Okay? And this mastic sealer is starting to give up the ghost. And his whole idea was to protect it. Now, i am kind of got mixed emotions about this, but it should be resealed. I'm trying to drain water out of the walls, I get that. But the apron for the pool is designed to take water away from cascaded into the pool when you have rain. So this pool is going to push water towards the base, and so the mastic sealer, I think, should be redone. Some of our rain gutters are below grade, and that's a good thing. And our bushes and stuff. Now, I saw some on the other side, but there's no time like the present. But this flagstone is not dimensionally uniform. Okay? It's okay for your kids. They're little mountain goats. Okay? It's okay for me. You know, I'm, I'm not there yet. Every day. Okay? I mean, some days. But this is not dimensionally uniform, and this could be a trip hazard to a pedestrian. You know, especially us older geriatric people. So this could be a trip hazard. So this is just know that. I mean, it's it's attractive. If you want to see some flagstone, come over to my house. My house is not for sale. Okay. Again, we do not have weep holes over our fenestrations here. And our carriage lamp, our exterior luminary, luminaire, okay, has not been sealed. You know, second verse, same as the first. You know, luminaires, luminaires tree too close. This is a clothes dryer event. wonder how you're doing. Oh, you're closing? Look at that. Okay, we got a hole around the faucet. You think water can get in there? I do. Water jump right off in there. We're moving along. Tree's kind of close. And remember we were talking about the characteristics of brick and brick leaking and stuff. We, you see all these retaining walls around the neighborhood. And we're in North Texas, okay? So we're on expansive clay soil. And one thing we know for sure is that this is going to move. Okay, the soil is going to move. The home is going to move. There's going to be there's going to be static pressure, okay? So we have these things called control joints. Some people call them expansion joints. Call them what you will, okay? But they're designed to take the pressure of the movement. All right, so they're supposed to be there for a purpose. Now, every couple of years, we want to come inside of here and we want to make sure that our sealant is looking good and holding up. If it's not, well, then we need to repair it on a as need basis. Another tree too close, another tree too close. Still no movement. This is pretty good. Got another clean out over there. This is kind of interesting. I'll just kind of move along with this. Got to keep it moving. Because we're a mobbing and a grabbing. And we got a little. Got a little deck over right there. Lawn sprinkler heads are not supposed to be closer than five feet to the wall. Lawn sprinkler heads are not supposed to be closer than five. Excuse me. Back up. Lawn sprinkler heads are not supposed to be closer than five inches to the wall. And then moving on along here, you know, they're not supposed to be closer than five inches to the flat work. Now I do not do automatic door inspections that's beyond the scope of my inspection um, but i do know that there is not a permanent button located in a permanent known location so that if there's an emergency with the door somebody could get to it there's three floating automatic controls that i'm aware of and that's fine and that's good to have but there should be a permanent control button 
for the gate and the gate should have the gate motor should have a warning notice like on the garage car overhead door video that you're about to see the one that has one door not working okay when you see that I mean there should be like a squash sticker an entrapment sticker a notice you know giving you a visual notice to be cautious about the gate and the gate opening and it'd probably be bit <laughs> it would probably be better if the notice was on this side since the gate swings this way this is a right-handed gate and it should be better if the notice is posted on this side so that people could understand it as they're coming up to the gate trees too close trees too close okay now this retaining wall this retaining wall we're getting close here it's barely twice its height 